you have to reconcile each account on a balance sheet. You're telling me there is no support for these balance sheet accounts? Your balance sheet is you not have trustworthy to reconcile if it's not reconciled. On this sheet. is the ABC of accounting. What do you mean the risk this of account prior is not period reconciled? You have to reconcile for each account on You're balance telling sheet. me there is no support for balance these balance sheet accounts? Not trustworthy if it's not reconciled. Okay, balance sheet reconciliations don't need to be this complicated. In this video, we'll talk about a simplified approach on which accounts to reconcile and how to go about reconciling them. Let's go. I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get started with balance sheet reconciliations, and then I'll show you an example in Excel on how to perform a reconciliation of a balance sheet account. And I'll also show you the wrong way to do it so you can avoid it. And toward the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some bonus tips on how to manage this process as a controller. And I can almost hear some of you right now thinking, dude, why don't you explain to me first what the balance sheet is before we talk about reconciliations? And if that's the case, I'm gonna leave a link right up here for an hour-long trending video on the balance sheet. So go ahead and watch that first if you want a refresher on the balance sheet. Account reconciliations are part of the period end financial close and are done for a number of reasons. The biggest of which is that it gives the controller and management reasonable assurance that the balances on the balance sheet are correct. It also hedges against prior period adjustments. So when you know that the balances are supported by some kind of external document or a calculation, you are now reducing the chance of adjustments that will impact the prior period, which is, we all know, is the nightmare of every accountant. Also, they are done for compliance purposes, especially for companies that are publicly traded. And also, they are a good way to detect and hedge against fraud so think of cash accounts if someone is entering transactions in these accounts dealing with cash and someone else is reconciling these accounts at month end this is a good way to catch any kind of embezzlement or someone trying to hide or steal cash okay so what about the reconciliation process itself the simplest way I can describe this process is comparing the balance on the balance sheet at month end to an external document so an example is cash reconciliation you're comparing the balance on the books and records for cash to a bank statement statement which is an external document uh, for things like inventory you're comparing your inventory balance on a balance sheet to an external warehouse report that shows the balances and can substantiate the balance that you're showing on a balance sheet now if you're getting started as an accounting manager or a controller here are four easy steps to follow to get the process going the first one is to determine the risk associated with each of the balance sheet accounts and I'll show you how uh, or the criteria on determining the risk with each account step number two is going to be determining the frequency of reconciliation based on the risk uh, step number three assign the reconciliations to team members and then step number four uh, the team members will go ahead and perform the reconciliations and i'll show you one of these uh, reconciliations as an example so let's dive in all right so we pulled down the balance sheet for an example company here spa booker balance sheet and we have the balance sheet for month over month february 23 and march 2023 and we're going to go ahead and determine the risk associated with each account uh, the reason why we determine the risk is that it will drive the frequency uh, the reason why we do it this way is because we want to balance between the workload and the accuracy right so you want an accurate financial statement uh, but you want to balance that with the workload so if the risk of the account is low enough uh, you can reconcile it less frequently say every quarter but if the risk is high you want to reconcile that every month right to catch any kind of adjustment that needs to be made uh, there are some criteria that goes into determining the risk uh, so for cash accounts as you can see here the first account here and under banks is a cash account uh, the risk is gonna always be high because cash is the most liquid of assets and it's the easiest uh, to hide or conceal so we're gonna give that a high risk uh, and that's gonna drive a more frequent reconciliation every month right now when you get to some of the other accounts you'll see that maybe an account here like a deposit and an office space has the same balance month over month it doesn't change so you know think of it when you rent a new office um, and you have a deposit in the office you put down the deposit you list it as a current asset and it's sitting on your books and you're not changing it month over month it's going to stay there possibly for years right so that's a low risk account and for this one you can assign a lower a low risk assessment and that's going to drive a less frequent reconciliation of that account also everything that we're talking about here today is a small part of a bigger process of the financial close which is described in detail with examples in the controller academy which is i'm very proud to say now includes thousands of students that are enrolled and learning from it and it's rated 4.9 out of 5 so uh, check down below i have a link on the course and the reviews take a look and check for yourself
Another factor to consider if the account is an automatic posting account, such as accounts payable or accounts receivable, that can lower the risk a little bit because these accounts uh, do not have journal entries. The account simply does not allow you to post journal entries. It's only either uh, vendor invoices or customer bills or invoices. Uh, in this case, since it's an automatic posting, that lowers the risk of the account. Uh, another factor too is if the account is zero balance account, so it's always an account with a zero balance at period end, that can lower, can lower the threshold of risk as well lower in the frequency. I'm going to go ahead and leave this file in the description below so you can download it for free and take a look at how I assess the risk for each account. All right, step number two in this process is to determine the frequency of reconciliation based on the risk that we just did together. So when we go back to the file, uh, if the risk is high uh, or medium, I'm going to reconcile this monthly, right? And if the risk is low, I'm gonna go ahead and reconcile this every quarter. So for example, here for the deposit account we talked about, we have a low risk profile. We're gonna choose to reconcile this quarterly. Again, we wanna uh, balance between workload and accuracy. Therefore, we do this approach of risk uh, and frequency. Step number three in this process is to assign each of the accounts that we just looked at and right now to a team member uh, on your team so that you can go ahead and reconcile it each month. So this way everybody knows what they have to do at period end. So here I have a tracker, uh, which is part of the file that I'm leaving down below for you to download. Uh, this tracker includes all of the balance sheet accounts and includes the frequency uh, and includes the preparer and the reviewer of these accounts, right? So this way it's clear to everyone on the team uh, what the expectations are, which accounts they own and they have to reconcile at period end. Step number four in the process is the reconciliation itself. So now each team member will go in and create a reconciliation for each of the accounts that is assigned for them. And I remember when I was a new accountant, so this is me year one as an accountant, and my controller walked in and asked me for a reconciliation of finished good inventory. And what I did was a complete naive approach to do it. So what I did is I went into the general ledger of finished good inventory and downloaded the activity of the GA right and tied that to the balance sheet and presented it back to the controller as a reconciliation uh, which of course is completely wrong because what I did is I essentially tied the balance sheet to itself right the journal ledger activity is what leads to the balance in the balance sheet and tying the two together is meaningless and doesn't substantiate any of the balances of finished goods uh, and of course the right way to do it would have been to get an external support for finished goods which would be a warehouse report showing the listing of finished goods and showing that the balances would tie to what's on the balance sheet okay so that is the wrong approach to do it uh, which is G GL activity as a support. GL activity is not a support. Uh, and then uh, the right approach is obviously to get an external support for it. So the reconciliation itself can be done in multiple ways. Uh, the easiest way or simplest, most common way is to reconcile in Excel, which is the example that we'll show here is a reconciliation in an Excel file. But also a lot of the accounting softwares allow you to create a reconciliation. So for example, cash reconciliation or bank statement reconciliation all of the accounting softwares allow you to do that directly in it. Uh, and I'll leave a video link up here to a bank account reconciliation that I've done, a video on a reconciliation you can watch. But also uh, some of the advanced ERP softwares like NetSuite allow you to create reconciliations of other accounts as well, such as prepaid, accruals, AR, AP. You can create the reconciliation directly in the accounting uh, software. Uh, there are also external tools that you can use for reconciliation, such as Blackline, Flowcast, which uh, down the line, we'll make some videos explaining how to use these tools. But let's go ahead and take a look at an example reconciliation in Excel here. All right, so this is an example reconciliation of deferred rent, which is a liability account on a balance sheet. Uh, what I'd like to do is create three tabs in the work paper. Uh, so I have a tab for cover. This is my cover sheet. I have a tab for the actual calculations or the listings of what goes into the account. And then I have a tab for trial balance showing the balance of month end so I can support that my calculation or support or external document or calculation ties into a trial balance. So in the cover sheet, what I have is um, information on the account itself, such as the account code on the, you know, the GL code and the accounting software. I have the name of the account, deferred rent. I have the uh, parent account on the financial statements that, are roll up, that it rolls up into, which is other current liabilities. I have account description, uh, deferred rent is a liability resulting from the difference between actual cash paid and a straight line expense, uh, which is just a description of what's in the account. This way, when someone is looking at this work paper here, they know 
what they're looking at, right? I have a threshold for investigation, which is $10. And this is something you can discuss with your team and your CFO on the threshold for investigation based on prior sort of adjustments or errors that your team has found in the past in their working papers. Uh, in this case here, I have $10 a threshold be below which I'm not going to investigate any difference above which we have to investigate the difference. Uh, month end, uh, March 31, uh, 2023. This is the period end that we are reconciling this uh, uh, account for. Now, the reconciliation itself, I have the beginning balance, uh, 41,667, uh, which is essentially the ending balance from the prior month. It just rolls forward and becomes the beginning balance this period. I have activity, uh, which I'm going to pull from my calculation. So I'm going to say equal. And my working paper, I have here the summary of the lease agreement. Uh, so this is a rent situation where we're getting a month for free. Um, and I have the beginning and um, end date of the lease here and the calculation of the deferred rent. Uh, this work paper also will be attached to the description below of this video. Go ahead and download it and take a look at what I have here. Uh, but the activity in the month is going to be the amount of deferred rent that I'm booking, which is $4,000. And that makes my ending balance equals beginning plus activity equals 37,500. I'm going to pull the balance from a try balance. I'm going to say equal, go to try balance tab and pull in my balance here for deferred rent. And the difference is $1, which is below my threshold for investigation. Um, now the account is reconciled and I can save this uh, file on a drive as support that I perform this reconciliation. Now, as promised at the beginning, we'll talk about some important tips for accountants or controllers who are starting out and want to get the accounts reconciled. Uh, the first question I usually get is, do I have to reconcile every account on the balance sheet? And the answer is yes. You have to reconcile every account in a balance sheet. However, you should approach it from a risk-based approach like we described in step number one and two of this video. You assess it based on risk and the risk will drive the frequency so that you're trying to balance between accuracy and the workload, right? So you don't want to be, if something is low risk, you don't want to be reconciling it each month. You can do that quarterly or annually, right? The second question I get is who in the team should be reconciling the accounts? So every account should have a preparer um, and a reviewer, right? So we have someone who's preparing the reconciliation and somebody who's reviewing it. The person who is preparing the reconciliation should be someone who's close to the activity or knows um, the nature of what goes into the account. And the reviewer should be somebody who is more senior on the team who can double check their work. Uh, now, the exception to that is cash accounts. With cash accounts as a good control, you should have the person who is reconciling it, someone different from the person who's posting um, you know, daily activity into the cash accounts. So this way, if someone's trying to hide or embezzle uh, some of the funds of the company, someone else is reconciling it and they can uncover what they're doing. This is a good SOX control. Okay, uh, the third question I get is, how do I keep track of these reconciliations? Well, I shown uh, in step number four in this video, so I'm gonna leave a link to this file, a tracker that you keep on a monthly basis. Um, and this tracker will um, basically show you um, you know, who is the preparer, who's the reviewer, and you have a sign off. So I have here a sign off process uh, for the preparer and a sign off process for the reviewer uh, so that you can keep track and make sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to do. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, please share it with others. Um, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe now. And I'll see you in the next video.